for the Universidad Estatal a Distancia, the School of Social, Social Sciences and Humanities, and the English teaching major for first and second cycle, cycles, it is a pleasure to have your presence in the webinar. Pros and cons of online teaching tools by Joe Leon from Oxford University Press. Before we begin with this activity, we want to explain the dynamics of this webinar. We appreciate we, you keep your microphones and camera off at all times to avoid interruptions during the webinar. With the purpose of maximizing the time for every session, we invite you to ask your questions in the chat of this Zoom session. These questions will be written down by our organizing committee and we will share them with the specialist following the corresponding order in the chat. We advise you to verify that when posing your questions, you are sharing them with the whole group of the session. If any question cannot be answered in this session, the, organiz the organizing committee will send it to the specialist and he will answer through email to the participants of the, in this seminar. Before joining Oxford University Press, Joe was a teacher of English as a foreign language for over 13 years at, prestige, at prestigious private institutions at Peru. He graduated in education from Universidad Nacional Mayor de San Marcos in Peru and took courses of linguistics of the English language as well. As an online platforms specialist, his initial role at Oxford University Press, Joe offered training sessions for, teacher, for teachers across Latin America in the use of the technology components offered by Oxford University Press as part of their publications. As a customer success consultant, his current role, Joe's main duty has to do with managing strategic digital solutions for Oxford University Press customers in Latin America. Without any further information, welcome, let's, let us welcome Mr. Leon. Thank you very much, Ariel. And thank you, uh, everybody, for being here. It's a pleasure for me to be with you today. And, um, well, to present this um, very interesting topic. Very interesting, in fact, not only because uh, it's about technology, which is one of my main interests, but also because it reflects uh, what we are uh, all currently living and going through. Um, so today I'm going to present some of the findings I, I have uh, in terms of advantages and disadvantages of online teaching tools, um, some of the best things that have happened to us teachers in general so far after the COVID-19 started in some of the disadvantages as well, uh, advantages and disadvantages that we have seen um, up to this point. And of course, um, we are conscious that uh, more things are to come and we will continue to face more uh, pros and cons, and we will continue learning, of course. And this is why we're all here, to learn uh, from one another. Um, I'll be sharing, as I said, some of the findings I have, but I'm sure I will be also taking a lot from you. So thank you very much. Um, pros and cons of online teaching tools uh, is a, our topic today. And I'm going to start showing the agenda. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the positive impact of online teaching tools on both teachers and students, as well as the negative impact for teachers and students as well. Um, we're going to have a section for questions and answers, of course, or any, any general comments or uh, comments from, from you or additional comments from myself as well. And um, then by the end of the presentation, I'm going to um, share some final reflections. We're going to be uh, uh, sharing uh, some, well, the links that I'm going to be using in this presentation are going to be shared as well. So don't worry if you don't have access to them during the presentation, all of them will be shared at the end. 
So you don't need to um, copy any of them. They will be available to all of you. So um, it's time to start. Uh, let's begin. And to begin, I'm going to uh, start with uh, something that everybody knows. Uh, and this has to do with what happened around 15 months ago, more or less, depending on, on, on the country. Well, I am from Peru and here in Peru, uh, we started lockdown in March, 2020. So for us, it's like around 15 months ago. And I know that uh, well, throughout Latin America, it's been more or less the same. So what happened around 15 months ago in the world was that we were not kindly invited. We were actually pushed. We were thrown to um, do things in a completely different way from one day to the other. So we were so used to doing things and we were really good at teaching the way we used to teach 15 months ago. And then all of a sudden, we simply saw ourselves uh, working from home, teaching from home, doing everything from home. And, and, and it was something that um, it, it's, not, it's not a secret. Nobody was actually prepared, 100% at least. Many of, uh, many of us might have, I don't know, sometimes worked from, from home from time to time. Uh, but once lockdown started, we had to um, rethink about what we, uh, or the way we, we, we needed to teach. We had to um, reshape everything we knew and we had to start to adapt, of course, uh, everything um, we did as teachers because we were, um, as I said, thrown into a completely different um, um, teaching and learning environment. So we were not going to be uh, going to a classroom. We were going to stay at home. We were not going to see face to face to our students. We were going to uh, be like we are, <laughs> like we are uh, actually doing in this moment. We were going to talk to a screen, right, and, and a camera, and that way we um, we had to um, restart what, uh, what we usually, uh, what we used to do teaching English, but in a completely different way. So that happened around 15 months ago. That's not secret. We, we, we all know that, but I would like to I would like to know, and uh, I would like you to uh, let everybody know here, how did you feel when this all started, when, 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 uh, when you knew that you had to stay home, that everything was like changing? How did you feel at, at that moment? Um, and, and, and please give me your, your opinions in the chat and tell me, how do you feel? Perhaps you felt, uh, I don't know, confused, or uh, or you felt um, that it was this was going to be just for one week or two weeks, so you felt optimistic. Uh, so how did you feel when this all started? I would like to know. And uh, for example, here in Peru, uh, when we started lockdown. Um, authorities said that it was going to be for two weeks only. So for, for me personally, it was like, well, two weeks, it would be like uh, taking a time off, that, uh, a time off school or a time off uh, the office, a time for myself to relax, to, 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 to do certain things that I always uh, do when I have free time. So it was like yeah, two weeks, it's okay, right? Um, but after that, it was two more weeks and two more weeks and two more weeks. And it's been, as I said, uh, 15 months, around 15 months already, and we are still um, in the same situation. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be uh, reading the, some of the comments in the chat. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, so anxious, yes, afraid, detached, panicky, uncertain, Yes, stressful, worried. 
Exactly, exactly. And, and, and Rita, for example, said that later felt worried how to do everything. And yes, that, 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 I think that is something that we all shared as teachers. We, we didn't really know uh, what was going to happen when we actually realized that it was not going to be just for two weeks. So uh, many of us felt perhaps um, doubtful right at the beginning like we didn't really uh for example i remember when the news the news was just about china and a virus and i said ah, china is so far away it was like mm, yeah maybe in uh in two weeks this will be over so but then when we realized that things were getting uh, a little worse and worse then we were a little bit worried, right? Perhaps we panicked when we started to see that, that everything had actually changed from one day to the other. And as I said, many of us also uh, perhaps felt um, uh, a little bit optimistic um, because uh, we felt that this was not going to be uh, longer than two weeks. Anyway, uh, everything you've shared in the chat is something that I think we uh, all felt at certain moments, right? And uh, we all felt that uh, we were in a completely new environment, in a completely new situation that we weren't prepared, that we didn't know how to handle. And of course, there was a moment in which we needed to start to make decisions. We needed to start to adapt ourselves we needed to start to rethink and reshape things um, in general. And our teaching, of course, uh, was going to be, uh, the way we taught was going to be affected because we needed to um, rethink, rethink about um, the way we taught. Uh, but anyway, that's how uh, you all felt. And now I would like to ask, what did you do? I mean, okay, some of you mentioned that you were, you felt anxious, uh, you were worried, you felt doubtful, perhaps you were uh, really stressed. So what did you do? What did you do when you realized that this was not going to be two weeks? This was not going to be, um, as perhaps authorities said at the beginning. Uh, what did you do? And share that please in the chat. Um, what did you do when you knew that this was going to take longer? And what did you do when, when you learned that uh, teaching was not going to be the same ever again? So what, what did you do? Did you start to um, investigate about the virus? Did you start um, to, oh, nice answer, started to train in the most practical platforms, for example. So you started to investigate about platforms, right, in, in general. Um, uh, Rita, for example, says learn and learn every day. Talk with coworkers, that was super important. But uh, Rita is mentioning something really, really important, which maybe didn't happen so often uh, before talking to parents as well, talking to parents, talking to students. Yes, that, that was something we usually did, but talking to parents perhaps was not something that we used to do as often as, as now. Um, Yuri says that she started looking desperate ideas, desperate ideas, wow, that's, that's a nice way to, to, to describe what you did, techniques to teach in an online class, of course, um, Jorge Eduardo says reading for new ways for teaching online. Jorge, where do you read that? Did you have any books uh, about teaching online at that moment? Uh, or, 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 or I'm sure uh, we all started to surf the, surf the net for, for information, right? Uh, Tatiana says, I try to look for the positive outcomes of of staying at home, right? So you started to realize that this was not going to be only two weeks and you, you needed to adapt. And Tatiana said that she took advantage of taking virtual courses, that's great. So you were like more optimistic 
And Andrea says, we didn't have time to adapt, just changing everything to virtual mode. And that's true, absolutely true, because we, we, were, not, we were not ready for that. So we didn't have time. We, we simply needed to adapt overnight. And that's something that we teachers uh, always do, actually. Uh, Maria, Maria Adela says, I took online courses to learn how to teach virtually as well. So yeah, that's something that um, we, started, we started to do. Some of you mentioned that, for example, while staying at home, you started to investigate, you started to surf the net, you started to go online and find as much as information of, as possible, perhaps what other countries were doing, uh, perhaps what, what, what was online teaching about and what, what you needed to do from that moment on so that you could do your job as well as you always did, right? Or as well as possible. If it was from one day to the other, then we felt that we were, we were not prepared, but we, ne we needed information. So we needed to learn new things, definitely um, at that moment, at that time. Uh, as you mentioned, some of you were investigating about how to teach online, uh, what, what, was, um, what is synchronous, what is asynchronous, what is an online platform, what is an LMS, uh, what, uh, what, is, what is Mentimeter, What's, how can I now control, for example, many teachers uh, uh, mentioned that they start to think about new tools like, okay, when I was in the classroom, I could control time with my watch. But now I'm not in the classroom from home. How can I show my students that I'm actually controlling the, 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 the students' talking time, for example? Uh, so little things like that, we didn't know, or many of us didn't know. So we needed to start investigating, not only about teaching online in general, but teaching tools, um, teaching uh, or, or, or digital gadgets, LMSs, et etc. et cetera. Et cetera. And something very important that some of you have mentioned is that we also started to uh, talk to our colleagues more often because we all were in exactly the same situation. So there was a time in which none of us was ready and all of us needed support, the same support because we were actually going through the same situation. And, and we started to uh, create, for example, did you, did you create groups in WhatsApp, for example, to, um, to share ideas, to make comments, to learn together? Um, I, I'm sure you started to make phone calls, a lot of phone calls to talk about the new situation and how you could better uh, prepare yourself to teaching um, for, for teaching online. And um, in this picture, I am showing, for example, in the picture on the right, I'm showing something that you also mentioned, right? We understood that we needed to adapt and we understood that the new classroom was not actually uh, four walls, right? And chairs and face-to-face -face, um, classes, but the new classroom, the new teaching and learning environment was now our laptop, our PC, right? And our, our interaction was now not face-to-face, -face, talking face-to-face -to, -face to our students, but um, in front of a camera, in front of a laptop, in front of a PC. And actually that was one of the biggest problems as well. I remember uh, many colleagues um, talking, well, not necessarily about how to teach online, but how to actually start using their laptops again, because they hadn't been using their laptops for years sometimes. Some of them had two laptops at home or two PCs at home or three PCs at home, and they simply didn't notice that these PCs were at home because they, we really didn't need to use them as much as we do now. 
So many of us perhaps started to purchase mouses, keyboards, uh, <laughs> etc. So you know, we we simply needed to adapt as quickly as possible, and it was not only about how to teach online, but we needed to equip ourselves with PCs, laptops, internet. So we we started to notice that all of a sudden our internet connection was so slow that was not helpful, was not really helpful. So we needed to think about a lot of things at the same time and not only about how to, how to better teach online, but there, it was the complete package that we uh, had there and we had to figure it out all at once and, and try to um, uh, do it as well as possible. And I'm sure we struggled a lot. So, so what did you do? This, 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 this is what we did, right? This is what we did. And let's go now, let's jump to today. So this was just a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, remembering a little bit of what happened and how I felt or how we felt and how we reacted and what decisions we made and how we started to face the situation. But now let's go or let's, let's, uh, um, let's place ourselves on today. So today we can actually see all the way we have been through and we can actually mention a lot of positive and negative things about online teaching tools. And I would like you to give, give your comments uh, what you think has been positive so far and what you think has been negative so far about online teaching tools, about everything what we've been going on. Uh, and you are going to find this, uh, this link in the chat. Please click in the chat and give us, give us your comments, give me your comments and, and let us know what you think has been positive and what you think has been negative about online teaching tools after uh, everything we've been through, after all the learning we have been through, after um, all the adaptation we, uh, we've been through. So please let me know about um, positive and negative things, situations, uh, experiences that you can mention about online teaching tools. I'm going to share um, the screen so that everybody can see the comments um let's see if somebody is already commenting there so let me share that there are no comments yet but uh please let me know what you think about positive and negative um aspects about online teaching tools and you can do it right now or you can actually do it throughout the presentation you can even uh place your comments after the presentation okay and we'll be sharing uh, the results as well. So what what do you think uh, are some of the positive and negative things about online teaching tools? Uh, we already have some comments that you can be reading. Some of you mentioned that you can do many activities. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. But not all the students have access to internet. Yes, we are still struggling with that. And actually, um, that was something also really important to mention that we started to see that as, as a society, we were not uh, well balanced, let's say, in this, uh, in this important aspect. So internet or the internet connection, connectivity was not exactly the same for everybody. And we started to um, realize that when, um, when, the, when the lockdown started. So too many tools to handle. Yeah, that's right. We, we felt overwhelmed because there were many things, so many things that we needed to learn and so many tools that we needed to handle that perhaps we felt that it was too much and perhaps we felt that we couldn't actually uh, uh, handle everything that we were um, uh, exposed to at that moment. Lack of con connectivity, of course, once again, positive. Uh, have very dynamic classes. That's great, that's great. That's actually something that many teachers have mentioned. Uh, students may feel depressed and isolated. That's right, absolutely right. 
and um, and that is something we have also or we have to face from now on. Uh, it's it's a new it's a new issue that we need to think about for the future, right? Um, something positive, some, somebody has mentioned the variety of options to use with students, that's great. And the negative aspect, not all students have access to internet one more time. So as you can see, there are certain things that uh, we, we, we share, right? We have in common. There are a lot of resources, one more time, and negative, sometimes students don't do the activities even if they have the tools to do it. Yeah, that was actually something, uh, something uh, really interesting because even though they could, many of them didn't do it. Now let's read this. Positive continuous learning chances, resilience. Yes, that's right, trial and error. That's great. So we started to investigate, we started to learn, we started to reshape things, and we started to re-educate uh, ourselves. That's great. Negative fear. Yes, fear of the unknown, definitely. Uh, a little rusty with apps, that's absolutely true. Too many options to choose the most practical ones and more time to plan virtual than face-to-face -face classes. Yeah, that's absolutely right because when we had face-to-face -face classes, we had everything under control because that was something we always did. That was something that we were familiar with, but all of a sudden we needed to start planning virtual classes and that was something completely new at that moment um again there are uh, positive there are a lot of resources negative sometimes students don't do the activities well that's something uh, we have already seen and overwhelmed with virtual classes and housework absolutely right kids talking or taking sorry kids taking virtual classes too so everything was virtual and yeah it, it was it was very overwhelming at the beginning. And something at the end, we have positive using technology all the time, knowing new tools to teach. Definitely, that was something very positive. Using creativity and imagination. And we as teachers have developed a super creativity and a super imagination, right? That uh, because we actually needed to solve problems on the go. And as soon as we faced and, and solve perhaps one problem, we already had a long list of new problems that we needed to face. And then uh, here it says possibility to teach from any place with a good internet connection. That's, that's right, that's also some, something good. And the negative aspect, the communication faces challenges. Uh, we are not in the same place, definitely. So thank you very much if you, uh, if you have more comments, please continue uh, commenting here. Um, that will be open throughout all the presentations. So yeah, you've, you've actually shared what many of us, well, all of us have felt sometimes, and I'm sure teachers all around the world share exactly the same feelings. So some of the positive and negative um, aspects about online teaching tools uh, are the ones you have mentioned, of course. So today we are not going to focus on, um, on for example, whether students uh, have uh, the power to turn on or turn off their cameras, or um, I don't know, things like, um, for example, a positive aspect was that I didn't need to, or I could save time because I didn't need to, um, um, I don't know, wear the most shiny shoes before going to work, right? I could do it at home, I don't know, with the most, with the most relaxing uh, shoes, sandals, running shoes, etc. cetera. So, so some of the positive and negative aspects as well that we are not going to mention. But now let's focus on um, on this information. Some of the positive impact of online teaching tools um, on teachers and students, and something that you have also mentioned in the Mentimeter activity has to do with the fact that as teachers, we have been able to demonstrate our great ability to adapt 
to unexpected difficult circumstances. And this is something that I always have, I, I always keep in mind that we as, as teachers, we have always been able to adapt. But what happened from the beginning of uh, lockdown you know, in our countries or around the world was that we actually had to adapt to something completely unexpected that we were not ready at all. It was super difficult and we didn't have the tools. So all of a sudden we had to change our minds, make decisions and demonstrate one more time that great capacity to adapt to this new unexpected, super difficult circumstance. And this is something that of course is one of the greatest impacts, positive impacts of online teaching in general. And I'm mentioning this as a positive impact of online teaching tools in general, yes, because as you said, you, you were, I mean, we all needed to start to investigate about how can I control the time? Okay, yeah, it's something maybe easy that everybody knows now, but not at that moment. How can I, I remember teachers asking screen sharing, what's that? How can I share my screen? And once teachers learn how to share screens, uh, they needed to learn how to share screen and audio. Because many of them said, yeah, wow, I learned and now I can do it. But I have a video, I show the video to my students and they can't listen to, <laughs> to the content. So what, what, what am I doing wrong? Now we can, even smile at that because all of us, hopefully, <laughs> right, know how to do that. But it was a completely new world at that moment, right? Breakout room, what is a breakout room, right? So, in, I mean, few of us knew what a breakout room was, how could it use breakout room, right? Um, so it was actually really scary. And we had to adapt to new online teaching tools, right? Um, then perhaps in, now, in one school, they started to use Zoom, like we are uh, connecting today. But in other schools, they started to use Microsoft Teams. And in the other school, Google Classroom or Google Meet or any other. So. Isn't it amazing, for example, to reflect today and to see that it's quite normal to talk about different uh, video conferencing platforms and we are able to understand and keep the conversation going, which was not exactly the same at the beginning of the pandemic, right? So at the beginning of the pandemic, it was like, no, let me focus on Zoom. I'm going to learn how to use Zoom. And if you, uh, or if somebody mentioned, no, our meeting today will be through Microsoft Teams. It was like, oh my God, another platform that I have to learn. So where is the link? How can I access? Should I, um, should I download anything or not? So it was, it was something completely, completely different. So, um, so what we needed to do was that we needed to adapt and we have actually demonstrated that great ability um, to adapt to this completely unexpected, super difficult situation. And now we can talk about, uh, now we can say that we can actually think about plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, right? So what happened, what happened if, what happens now if something doesn't work as expected. So we don't really panic, 
we know how to solve it because we have already adapted, right? Um, so let me now share about, um, let me share now a YouTube video in which some teachers mention some of the positive impacts uh, of online teaching in general, of online teaching tools in general. Oxford University Press uh, ran a survey and uh, we are always conducting research and investigations, always talking to teachers. And here are uh, some teachers that have something to say about the positive impact of online teaching as well. So let's see here, let me share that uh, video here. Okay. And here we go. I'm trying to focus on the brighter side of this global pandemic. If it has done nothing else, I believe it has shown me to what extent as a teacher and as a person, I can adapt to unexpected difficult circumstances. Well, as they say, every cloud has a silver linen. So as a teacher, I did manage to find some positive moments. A, a clear algorithm, accuracy and adaptivity. B, thinking out of the box. C, creativity, cooperation and critical thinking. Highlights of 2020-21 for me have been seeing students make actual, real progress. It's been so nice and it's confirmed to me that teaching online does actually work. Who knew? No matter how we teach, online blended, in the hybrid or socially distanced, let's always remember Roy Bennett, who said that one word of encouragement can be enough to spark someone's motivation to continue with a difficult challenge. All right, so as you can see, uh, teachers around the world, and you have noticed that these uh, four teachers have different accesses and they are from different parts of the world. So all of us share um, the, same, the same feelings, right? And, and, and because we have been through exactly the same, the same situations. Uh, we have um, some, some links that um, somebody has been or is, is sharing as well. Okay, so um, just let me know if there are any, any other comments or any, any questions during the presentation. Uh, there will be a question and answer section as well. So um, let's, let's see what else we have here. And let's continue talking about the positive impact of online teaching tools on teachers and students. And as, as some of the teachers in the video said, and also you said that in the, in the messages before, we, we started to think out of the box. We started to be even more creative than we used to be. Uh, as teachers, uh, we all develop uh, super creativity that we can use. For example, I remember uh, many situations when teaching face-to-face, -face, um, when I had to teach exactly the same lesson, but of course to a different group of students. So I needed to readapt the lesson and I could do that easily, even sometimes with little time to prepare my class. Uh, so creativity and thinking out, out of the box is something that we are and we have always been familiar with, but we perhaps started to become even more robust at doing this, right? Um, you mentioned at the beginning of this presentation that you started uh, calling colleagues, talking to other teachers, uh, perhaps you started uh, following uh, I don't know, bloggers or YouTubers who had some information about online teaching. So, and then you started to um, share experiences. Uh, so teamwork has been crucial, has been super, super important to not only face the, the, the unexpected situation, the unexpected difficult circumstance, 
not only to face it, but to handle it and to overcome it. So teamwork and cooperation have been absolutely crucial for we, um, for us teachers and students as well, but for, for teachers in this case, uh, we have also um, become stronger uh, 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 working together, cooperating, sharing, right? And critical thinking, of course, uh, because we had to um, improve every time. We needed to focus on what worked well, what went well in my classes online, and think about what didn't work so well and find a new tool and find a new way. And again, talk to a colleague and ask what worked for you because this didn't work for me. So we were in constant improvement. And so we needed to uh, think critically, definitely at all moments. We even started to practice action, action research why? Because we identified problems at all moments. As I said, some of the simplest problems at the beginning, something like my laptop is not working. I haven't used my laptop for, my laptop for years and it's not working now. What can I do? I don't have enough space. Uh, I don't have enough memory. So I thought all laptops were the same. But all of a sudden, I realized that my laptop needs more, uh, more uh, memory. I have only one gig or two gigs. And uh, when using, when using uh, Zoom, I need four gigs or maybe more. So uh, things like that. So we identified simple problems from the very beginning. And then uh, what, what tools should I use? Right, uh, teaching online is not exactly the same. It's not. It's not the same as teaching face to face. So now, what can I do? So we identified problems at all moments, but we didn't. We didn't stick there. We went for possible solutions. We thought about possible solutions, talking to teachers, sharing information, going to YouTube, surfing the web, reading a lot. And then we started to try out uh, what we found out. And we saw what worked well and we saw what didn't work well. So in that sense, we, were, we needed to reflect on what we were doing at all moments, at all times. And after reflecting, if something didn't work, then we needed to think about a new way. Uh, we needed to think about, uh, a new strategy and what worked well, we embraced it. We learned that that really worked for us and everybody was happy. And then we saw a new problem and all started again. The cycle started again and it's, a, it's actually a never ending cycle, but it was really, really difficult at the beginning. So we all started to investigate, to research, and to practice actual research, by the way, I'm sure that if you had taken note of everything you've done um, after the pandemic started, we, <laughs> we actually would be looking at a lot of books written by yourselves. Um, now, talking about digital skills and competences, of course, right? Uh, today, we are very familiar, as I said, as I said before, with uh, video conferencing platforms. Um, I I I was I was reading the other day some uh, some information about technology in general and and, and 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 teachers and education, and it made me remember uh, a moment in my life when. Everybody said, for example, if you speak English, then you are one step ahead. So you should speak English. So you should study English, right? So it was Spanish and English. All right, perfect. So, but once you speak another language, then you start to see um, 
uh, then you start to see things in a different way. You have new perspectives. Of course, you can you have access to a lot of information. Uh, and then computers. Everybody said that uh, if you didn't, uh, if you weren't able to um, use a computer, then uh, you were a little bit behind from the rest. And so today, it is it is clear that we teachers, if we don't know or if we don't get familiar with at least three at least three that's what that that, that was the, the information i read at least three video conferencing platforms then we will be one step ahead right so what are the most common zoom the, the one we're using now okay can you share screen successfully can you share audio successfully do you know how to open how to close how to join a breakout room etc cetera, etc cetera. so yes all right what about the other platforms so how many platforms are you familiar with so that's something we now need to take into consideration digital skills and competences uh, have become crucial nowadays right so for example it's it's something that happens a lot some teachers teach not only at one place but at two places and in those two places they use two different video conferencing platforms so in one place they teach through zoom and in the other place they teach through um Google, uh, meet for example right so and that's normal that's that's okay right and uh, as a result today we have a wider range of tools for different teaching environments because what comes what comes next is that we will go back, right? Eventually, we will go back to the classroom. Everything will be face-to-face -face again. But believe me, their uh, technology is here to stay. And I'm really happy that this is true today because I always, I always consider that technology, of course, is all around us. But education in particular, didn't really uh, go together with technology. That has definitely changed today. So even if we are in face-to-face -face classes, we will uh, use, we will continue using technology to boost our classes, to have greater classes, uh, greater face-to-face -face classes, of course, for hybrid classes, for blended, for virtual. So that's definite right, but for face-to-face -face classes as well. So what will happen when we go back to, at least here in Peru, we haven't, we haven't returned to physical classrooms yet. So what will happen, right? There will be a new, a, a new, um, a new scenario, right, that we will need to face. And again, we will need to adapt one more time and rethink and do things in, in, in a different way probably. So let's talk about students. Positive impact of online teaching tools, teachers and students. So in this case, as students, they, uh, there are a lot, of, a, lot of, uh, a lot of advantages, a lot of positive aspects, but some of the most important are here. As students, they have been able to take direct responsibility for their learning. This has been one of the greatest things that could have happened, right? Students are feel now the responsibility for their learning, especially, and that's something we are mentioning here in terms of time management, right? Because they need to decide when they do homework, they need to decide what time they will uh, I don't know, wake up to have breakfast and go to online classes, or maybe skip breakfast and go to online classes, or, well, time management is, 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 a, is, a, is a big topic, but students now are taking direct responsibility and they need to manage their time, okay? Um, 
um, the best way possible. And also, uh, they have uh, understood that in order to continue learning English outside the classroom or after class, there are uh, a lot of um, tools online, okay, a lot of platforms, uh, depending on the course books. For example, here, uh, well, Oxford University Press, we have books that offer also online practice platforms and all the content in the online platform is related to the book. So it's, it's not exactly a workbook. So students, for example, have their, their, their eBooks, their student book eBook, their workbook eBook. And after that, they can also access activities online and all the activities online are related to the course book they are using in their English classes. So uh, these online tools or online platforms allow them to continue practicing and learning English outside the classroom or after their classes, right? Um, Tatiana mentioned something really interesting. She says that by being able to adapt to this new situation, we're also teaching students about flexibility, that's right, and adaptability as part of some of the soft skills that they need to have. I totally agree with you. Um, Oxford University Press, as I said, um, runs um, a, well, service, stays in contact with teachers around the world. And we have here an impact study that we run as Oxford University Press. And let me share what are some of the findings. And it's here, right? So, so you can see interesting, interesting numbers. Okay, this is information from Oxford University Press. And you can see, for example, here that 94% of participants, teachers, agree that online practice improves students' engagement with learning English outside the classroom. That's big numbers, 94%. 93% of teachers agree that online practice improves students' engagement with learning English outside the classroom oh, sorry, through improving their sense of ownership, in this case, 94 uh, through improving their focus when learning. And 92% agree that online practice improves students' engagement with learning English outside the classroom through improving their enjoyment of learning. And um, we also found that 96% of teachers perce perceive that the features in Oxford Online Practice help improve students' engagement with learning English outside the classroom. So this is, this is great. So these tools actually help a lot and students now are aware of that. To continue with positive impact of online teaching tools and teachers and students, we have, or there has been, and this is something also really important, there has been a digital transformation in education, not only in our countries, but around the world. Today, it is uh, very common to talk about e-books, e-workbooks, e-course books, e-readers. Uh, it's it's uh, um, now a topic of every day to talk about online tools, LMSs, learning management systems, uh, video conferencing platforms, et cetera, et cetera. So definitely there has been a digital transformation in education all of a sudden. If some countries around the world were, were already working on digital transformation, well, the pandemic sped it up, right? Why? Because that, that, that's the way it is. Everybody needed to adapt. Here I have some interesting information about the European Commission, sorry and in which they mentioned their digital education action plan for the years 2021 to 2027. So that's how important digital transformation has become. And let me also share that with you. So here it is. 
uh, don't worry, I'm, I'm sharing also this link with you so that you, so that you can read this information. But here's the digital education action plan for the next years up to 2027. And there is a clear plan, right? That uh, I'm sure you will be uh, very pleased to read, okay? So um, that's some of the most positive impacts of online teaching and online teaching tools in general. The digital transformation in education, super important. So now let's go to um, the but <laughs> case. Let's now cross the path because, well, there are very positive things, but we cannot deny, we cannot close our eyes, right? And say that nothing negative is happening. There are, of course, challenges, big challenges, right? As the ones you mentioned at the beginning, uh, some of the positive and negative impacts uh, of online teaching tools. And some of the ones that I'm mentioning today, and this has to do with negative impact of online teaching tools on teachers and students, has to do with the fact that as teachers, we started to think of a non-systematic, on-demand teaching as well. I'm sure this has happened to all of us at, at a certain point. Non-systematic means that we were running, uh, we were so in a rush that we didn't really have time to plan as we, as we would have liked. So we needed to think uh, on a, on, on, on what I see my students need in this very moment and then do something to, uh, to meet that particular need, which was not necessarily part of a system or part of the plan or part of the year plan. So that is uh, one of the negative impacts of online teaching and online teaching tools. Uh, improvisation due to lack of time principally. This, I'm sure this has happened to all of us at a certain point. We had to improvise uh, in different ways. Maybe some of the most common are, for example, uh, we started to leave uh, a lot of homework right, when we couldn't cover, for example, uh, some of the content in class. Because we were, there was a moment in which we were overwhelmed. We, we were teaching, but we were also learning how to use technology, how to open a breakout room, how to use different platforms, how to better teach online, etc. So there was definitely uh, time for improvisation due to lack of time as well. And something really, really important and something that everybody around the world should be uh, considering today and everybody around the world is talking about this is well-being. So our well-being was affected due to too much screen time, right? And I'm going to propose, uh, well, here I have uh, interesting information about the CBC, uh, well, from the CBC News, and I'm going to share this, this video as well. But we also have uh, a survey to quickly check with five or six questions. If you are, for example, right now sitting comfortably and not affecting your physical uh, well being. Our well-being has been affected definitely, both mental and, and physical well-being. And that is really important. I see Ariel already uh, doing exercises there, moving, stretching. Yes, so we actually learn to do that because that is so important. So well-being has become really, really important today. So let's see, uh, let's go and watch that video 
while you uh, continue stretching there where you are. Okay, so let's uh, let's watch this 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 uh, video, which is very very interesting as well. Lisa Lavatan has wanted to be a teacher since she was a child and has now taught for 16 years, but nothing could have prepared her for the stress of teaching during the pandemic. The workload is never ending. There's no time to breathe this year. There's no time to prep. As a union steward in her school, she's also heard from colleagues. They're not eating, they're not sleeping, they're very overwhelmed. Levitan is one of 2,065 teachers of all grades from the Atlantic provinces and the Ottawa region who answered a CBC News questionnaire about teaching during the pandemic. Their answers suggest they're burnt out just over a month into the school year. The teachers we heard from told us their mental and physical health tops their list of concerns, with one-third considering leaving the profession or retiring. I, I love being an educator, but I don't feel like that's what I'm doing right now. This was true even for respondents from Nova Scotia, a province that has had low infection numbers. I feel like I'm a COVID rule enforcer, and if I could find a window out of the public education system right now, I would jump. Those COVID rules, like distancing, could be behind the stress. With three quarters of teachers who replied, saying that keeping social distance from students in class was not possible very often or not at all. In a statement, the spokesperson for the Ontario Minister of Education, Stephen Lecce, said the Ministry of Education provided health and safety training for all school board staff. One day was specifically dedicated to mental health and well-being. And conversations about stressed teachers are important to have because they affect students too, says this developmental psychologist. Essentially, they're not able to uh, transfer and uh, those feelings of safety onto the students. And the reason why that's important is because uh, without that, learning is not really possible. In a year where the education system is facing test after test, the thousands of responses show it's failing some of its teachers physically and mentally. Tiana Sumanak Johnson, CBC News, Toronto. All right. <clears throat> very, uh, very revealing. Uh, information there, right? Um, very important to take that into account. So well-being is super important. Um, well, I don't know if, oh, just give me a second. Uh, well, actually I'm going to be sharing this survey uh, at the end, okay? And you can um, test, okay? You can take the survey and see uh, if you are actually sitting comfortably or not, okay? Um, that's great. And so uh, some of the, um, some other negative impact uh, uh, of, of online teaching tools and teachers and students being that many students develop academic deficits and that's something also really important to take into consideration. Boredom has been one of the reasons that most teachers have mentioned on the side of students, of course, and absence of direct interaction with peers and teachers uh, have affected. Okay, too much, uh, too much time in front of the of the screen, and there has been something that they are calling learning loss and accelerated learning which can be overwhelming one more time, right? So it's interesting because at the beginning we were overwhelmed with, oh my God, now how can I teach online? And after we uh, overcame that, uh, now we are thinking about accelerated learning uh, because we learned so well that too many things are happening already at the same time. So um, there is also a, an interesting, um, uh, here we have an article by the BBC News, and this will also be shared with you, which they mentioned that children behind, children are getting behind in speech and understanding. And this is, of course, information that um, we need to take into consideration. So this is something, this is some, uh, some of the negative impacts uh, of, um, teaching online tools. 
All right. So um, I think uh, it's time for questions um, and answers or any comments that you may have both in the chat or I don't know if uh, we are we are receiving comments and questions through the chat, right? I don't know if uh, you'll be open your mind. Thank you, Joe. Well. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Emilia Quiroz, representative from the organizing committee, will share the questions that were posted by participants in the chat. Thank you, Ariel and uh, Joe for this presentation. Um, in fact, we don't have um, questions. We have, we, we do have some valuable comments. Uh, we had uh, the contribution of Tatiana, uh, from Tatiana Brenes about a book. And I'm going to take the liberty to copy it here, to copy on the, okay, to copy it again. There we go. And uh, thank you again uh, for this contribution. There uh, was also a comment from uh, Tatiana Brenes, who mentioned the following, by being able to adapt to this new situation, we're also teaching students about flexibility and adaptability as part of some of the soft skills that they need to have. And in reaction to that, uh, Judy Patricia Morales answered, I agree. Since teachers being role models includes showing them how to make sense of the real world. So we, we had those comments, which were very interesting. And uh, there, there is another question from uh, Marianela here. She asks, what about the situation of students with no access to computers and technologies? I think this is a problem in Latin America how to face such problem. Absolutely right. And definitely that happens uh, a lot in Latin America. Um, we have, uh, for example, here in Peru, um, there are a lot of cases of students, in, especially in rural areas, where they have to go up a hill um, so that they can reach uh, internet, uh, or they can reach, they can have connectivity so that they can uh, take their online classes, for example. That is a, a really serious problem, and I'm sure that happens all um, through Latin America. Unfortunately, uh, well, so far, I don't see uh, something that we can actually do because that's something governments mainly have to have to deal with and, and make decisions make the right decisions to overcome this uh, this reality um, so what what we what we do is is what we have been what we have been doing actually is to uh, try to teach the best way possible adapting to everything that comes uh, which in fact, we were not really prepared. And that, that has to be our, I think that has to continue be, be, uh, to be our contributions as teachers. Um, so there are different uh, people that will contribute to overcoming this difficult situation. Um, perhaps that's not a decision we have to make but definitely we are making a big, big difference the way we are doing things and uh, teachers have become a crucial um, column, a, a real column in, I mean, we have always been a, an important column in education, but today more than ever. And uh, I don't know uh, if, if there are, I think there are no more questions, so it's time for the final reflections before we, uh, we finish. And that has to do with 
uh, if you look at the if you look at the picture there, right? Uh, we have jumped right into uh, into a year with so uh, different things, uh, different, completely different from uh, the pandemic from when the pandemic started or before the pandemic started, and um, but we have to be prepared also for more challenges or more challenges. So some of the final reflections is that relationships are important. So this has been uh, demonstrated, mentioned by everybody around the world, right? That um, relationships are super, super important. And that has been demonstrated more than ever uh, while teaching online. So many, many teachers and students have been very successful in the new teaching and learning environment because of the relationship between teachers and students, right? Uh, so that is super important, that's huge relationships um, will continue to be important, will be important forever. The relationships have always been important. So, and that's something we have to keep in mind. Relationships, um, we have to keep good relationships and we have to get stronger relationships, especially at these uh, difficult times. Well-being is crucial mental well-being, physical, uh, mental health and physical health is super important. So we will continue to build strong and stronger relationships as long as we take care of our well-being as well, right? So there are new ways of, 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 of taking care of ourselves. So I, I for example, before the pandemic, I Personally speaking, I was not so aware that I didn't sit right in front of the computer. Now I am aware of that. Now I take care of myself. I have adapted my, my office, my working environment so that I can be as comfortable as possible. So I, I, I was not so aware of how important, for example, it was to sit comfortably and with my feet on the floor, right? Or on, on a surface. So I was not so aware of, of those simple things. And I've seen good results. So well-being is crucial, especially for us teachers who have to do a lot with well, during this pandemic. And we also need to be aware that more challenges uh, will come new challenges will come. And of course, we will need to continue adapting and readapting, thinking and rethinking and reshaping uh, and uh, continue learning, improving. We have started, we cannot stop, right? Technology is already here, so it will stay. It's up to us to uh, face the challenges. The best way, um, just like, just as we have done so far. So those are my final reflections. And um, something that one of the teachers in one of the videos that we showed said that one word of encouragement can be enough to spark someone's motivation to continue with a difficult challenge. And that's actually uh, how I would like to finish my presentation today encourage you to continue uh, to continue doing things the way you have been doing, to continue learning, to continue improving, and to continue being the best English teachers as possible, which I'm sure you are. So thank you very much for your attention. It's been a pleasure for me. We want to thank you, Mr. Leon, for his wonderful collaboration in this seminar.